On the breakfast, stagnation in power generation has continued despite the persistent increase in the demand for electricity by consumers since privatization in 2013. Also in the breakfast, stakeholders decry delay in launch of maintenance, repair and overhaul facility in Nigeria, seven years after the idea was conceived. What is responsible for the delay? And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the bigger stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a very beautiful um, you know, Wednesday morning and we're still in January, <laughs> right? It's the fourth day in, the, in January 2023. I know a lot of people are not used to saying 2022 and I'm also still grappling with all of that. But eventually we just get used to the fact that we're in New Year and it's called 2023. Now, uh, just before we get to the crux of the matter, my name is Messi Bopo, and it's really great to know that you are on the other side and you have joined the show. It's a great lineup this morning for us. It promises to be an amazing time. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee if you can, or whatever it is, and let's have a great moment. Well, on our top trending this morning, we start off with the fact that, you know, the, for 2023, the budget has been signed or assented to, that's the language, by the President Mohamed Buhari. Finally, I would say, President Mohamed Buhari has signed the 2023 21.83 trillion naira appropriation bill into law. And, uh, you know, the 2022 supplementary appropriation bill as well. It's, you know, a two-way thing. Well, the approved budget was jacked by 1.31 trillion naira, which was moved from initial 20.13 trillion uh, to 21.8 trillion naira. So that already got a lot of people talking about it. But let's even look at this. Buhari also said that this regime would speed up critical infrastructure projects. And that's probably the reason why, you know, uh, there's been an increase nationwide as it raced towards finishing uh, the finish line on May the 29th, uh, 2023, noting that the budget is uh, 21.83 trillion naira, an aggregate expenditure. Of course, that increase that I mentioned, 1.32 trillion naira, over the initial executive uh, proposal of 20.51 trillion naira. Uh, the issue of, uh, you know, INEC and what have you is also part of uh, you know, the reason why there's been an increase, and that's according to the government. Flood that happened, uh, the fact that some infrastructure has been, you know, affected, a uh, reason why you have all of this. But, you know, it's just quite worrisome. Nigerians have reacted differently. It might also interest you to know that the Nigerian president, Mohamed Buhari, has accused just as this uh, budget has been assented to, the National Assembly of padding the 2023 appropriation bill with 770 billion naira and 58.55 billion amid the country's 44.06 trillion naira public debt burden. He also stated that the National Assembly increased the ministries, departments and agencies, that's the MDA's provision by uh, 58, which is what I mentioned, uh, pushing the addition to 830 billion naira, but too much. You, let's even look at some of the concerns about, you know, the 2023 appropriation bill or the budget, if you like to say. The National Assembly passed that budget that cannot be funded by the country's total revenue. And the National Assembly also increased their own budget from 59 billion naira to 228 billion naira. And so a lot of persons have said that our politicians are criminal. They have liquidated the country with their reckless borrowing for consumption. If you look at, you know, the 2023 budget, some people have argued that uh, the budget is too small. If you look at the population, we haven't budgeted enough. But if you look at, you know, where the money is going to and what we're paying attention to, the capital expenditure and the recurrent capital, uh, it's nothing to write him about. So you say that you have, uh, you know, the capital expenditure of about five point, you know. So you're looking at five, 
five trillion, let's even talk about five trillion, let's leave it at that. There's an extra figure. And then you're looking at real current. That's the cost of running governance. So, but this is actually not shocking for 2023 because over time, that has been the pattern for us. We have allocated more resources or we have allocated so much in running governance because when you look at the recurrent uh, expenditure is what you used to pay salaries what have you i mean all of the extras and what you have for the capital is what you have in investing in capital project road construction and what have you so uh, where does our heart really lies let's see and this this cliche there's a phrase that says that if you want to look at the development of a country or a nation then you pay attention to where her um, you know, pay attention to where allocation is, is gone to. I mean, how much you are allocating to the capital projects. And we look at that, we can tell for sure that we're very big on spending, very big on paying salaries and whatever. And we're borrowing to do all of that because our revenue projection is not even, if you look at all, all, also all of the assumptions, I mean, this is a conversation we've had, you know, on a show uh, very, you know, prior to 2023 and also in 2023. If you look at our revenue, some of the assumptions in terms of oil and what have you, uh, it's not really realistic, very weak, and there are too many issues around it. But we can only continue to talk about these issues and hope that we get it right and hope that those who are calling the shots will think about the people. What's the rationale behind all of the increase? I mean, at this point, we were grappling with revenue issues. It wouldn't be okay for us to begin to reduce uh, you know, some of the excesses that we have in the budget, especially for the National Assembly, some other issues that are not developmental in nature. But that's what it is. Uh, another issue is about the fact that this fake recruitment portal, INEC has raised the alarm and they're talking about it, is really worrisome because we have to guard our democracy as we inch closer to the elections. Don't forget that's in the next month and is very close. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has again cautioned Nigerians against a purported portal for recruitment of ad hoc staff uh, for the 2023 general elections. They say that the website and some uh, blog below have ad advertised, apparently, not necessarily here, but they have advertised ad hoc staff position for the 2023 general election. The commission said that those portals or the portals are fake uh, as the commission was not longer recruiting for the election. Okay, officially website for the recruitment had been shut down a long time ago because INEC said that ad hoc staff recruitment portal was shut down on December the 14th, 2022. I think it was open in about, uh, you know, October or September thereabout. That's when, you know, there was an official opening and we need to guard against this. I, I don't think this should be an issue because at this point there should be some uh, unique features. There should be something very, uh, you know, specific. But it it's also important that, you know, the electorate and the people pay attention to this so you don't become vulnerable and then you fall for this. Some of them probably will ask you to pay money and your life might also be at risk. So, it, yes, it's a good one from INEC, right? But apart from that, we also hear the issue of, uh, as a yesterday was dominating some of the papers, talked about underage voters and the fact that parents would... <laughs> You know, Rick's going to jail, and we say, is INEC trying to pass the the blame? Is is this the blame game? How do you now blame the parents for underage voting? Why? How did they even get? How did how did this underage voters get into the register? So yes, we can't continue. I would say that we can't act like we don't know what's going on. We can't always act like you know, we leave in space and then fold the ants and look for who to shift the blame to. We need to put the acts together. Uh, you can identify. Yes, I know that these days the hormones are, grow are different now, so you can see a child who's 10 and they probably look like they're 18 or thereabout, but you can ascertain. For sure, you, would, you can tell. Uh, and then and, and some people say that uh, the issue of underage voting and underage voters have been very dominant and prominent in the northern part of the country. Let's pay attention to all of this. I, I don't think, uh, I mean, if you ask me to say that uh, it's really great to say you blame the parents for what? INEC should step up to our responsibility. But we have moved beyond that because, I mean, I'm not sure that we're having, uh, you know, the registration process. So if we now get to a point where we say there were underage voters in 2023 election, who should we blame? 
should it be the parents or you know the umpire that's saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that we have a credible free and fair elections every other time now just before we move away from a top trending conversation the issue of endorsement will not stop because uh, another some people will say a political big uh, you know force has endorsed uh, Peter Obi for president. Now, Edwin Clark endorses Peter Obi for president. This is a few days after Peter Obi gets endorsed by a former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Lucia Guno uh, Edwin Clark is an elder statesman of the South South region and uh, endorsed Peter Obi as his preferred candidate. According to him, Obi's plan to restructure Nigeria will bring unity. So according to him, he's looked at the manifesto. He, he thinks that the former Anambra state governor is very, um, you know, he's, he's the man for the job, has a viable solution to tackling the problems, you know, plaguing the country and what have you. But um, looking at it, you want to say that the conversation is getting very interesting. Uh, some people have appreciated where we're taking the conversation from it is no longer you know a party conversation it is now about the individual their personality and uh you know what they can do so he cited for instance honesty trust and transparency all of which he said will be displayed when he was governor of Anambra State. He also emphasized the importance of the next president being educated and experienced and argued that the South East should be given the opportunity to produce the next president due to the region's resourcefulness and, you know, educated population. But, you know, to that light, other persons would say it's just the fact that if there's been an agreement over time for power rotation, then it's it, it would just be right that power should go to the southeast, being that um, if you look at it in the history of all of this arrangement, the southeast has not been in charge uh, others are saying, oh, it's a gentleman's agreement. But like I highlighted, and if you look at the thoughts of Edwin Clark, it's that we're moving away from, oh, he's of the APC. We're moving away from the fact that he's of the PDP. We're moving away from the fact that he's this, he's all of that. And we're beginning to talk about individual's capacity, um, you know, their resourcefulness. We're looking at the personality rather than party affiliation or ethnic, uh, you know, uh, sentiment. So, yes, I know that for sure that we will definitely, in our democracy in Nigeria, we'll get to a point where all of this will become um, a an important factor in shaping the elections and shaping who becomes the governor, who becomes the chairman of uh, the local government or the council or of a certain ward and what have you. All of these factors in no time. It might necessarily not, you know, be for 2023, but I know that we're getting there and um, this would become very important. People would not be no longer be interested in whether you're of a certain political party, but they'll look at you know your track record and what you can do, your personality, and that will be the reason why you would be selected. But it might also interest you to know that, if you don't already know, that the elections are around the corner, 25th of uh, you know February, 2023. The presidential election would take place. And of course, the 11th of March, uh, there will also be another election, State House of Assembly and whatever you, governorship, maybe. Well, well, endorsement, whether you have anybody endorsing, it doesn't really, it might have an impact, it will have an impact to some extent, but uh, the overall power of endorsement lies with you uh, and with your vote. And so if you don't have your PVC, then it's important that you go get your PVC because you are um, the the, the endorser. You are the real deal for endorsing whoever becomes president, governor, and what have you come 2023, of course, in February and March. Well, that's so much we can take on our top trending. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking through the papers this morning. We'll call it Off the Press. Today, Kola Willie will join us. All things being equal. Please stay with us.